is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free 
holiness is Christ in me. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. song to rise to you when temptation comes my way when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus you're my hope and stay and when I cannot stand I'll fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. seated. Well, we are gathered here today for the home-going celebration of Willard Reynolds Vick. One of the things Mr. Vick did not want was a sad, solemn occasion. He wanted a celebration because he is in heaven with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, family, I know today is a day of sadness, and I understand why. But you, unlike a lot of people in the world, have hope. Because your husband, your father, your grandfather, your great-grandfather loved Jesus. And he is home in heaven with him. And when we follow what your husband did, what your father did, what your grandfather did, your great-grandfather did... We can be in home in heaven with Jesus too when we depart this earth. He was born on October the 11th, 1930 in Arlington, Alabama. And he went home to be with his Lord and Savior on Thursday, May the 13th, 2021 at 90 years old. Lived a good life. He is survived by his wife, Miss Weta, of 64 and a half years. Miss Weta, that is a legacy. Now, I'm, we won't open this up publicly, but to be married to Mr. Vic for 64 and a half years, I'm, I'm sure you could tell us some stories, both good and bad. Mostly good. Amen. In fact, I was told that he never, ever raised his voice to Miss Weta. Now, he raised it to the kids. And they sit about every 10 years just to keep in practice. But he never raised his voice to Miss Weta. He is survived by four children, Linda Hennett and her husband Bobby of Tallahassee. 
David Vick and his wife Sheila of Crawfordville, Michael Vick and his wife Julie of Spring Branch, Texas, and Jimmy Vick and his wife Jackie of Crawfordville. He also has a sister, Betty Etheridge in Montgomery, Alabama. And of course, he is survived by 11 grandchildren and seven great-grandchildren. The Bible says, blessed is the man whose quiver is full. And no doubt, he has a wonderful family. One of the things I truly remember about Mr. Vic was the smile he always had on his face. You never seen him without a smile. Well, maybe you guys did. I'm sure you did, kids. But one of his pastors, I never did. He always was smiling. He was always upbeat. He was always cheerful. And we just knew that that was just the love of the Lord coming out in his life. Um, but I learned some things about him that I didn't know. And so I want to share some things to you, church, that maybe you didn't know. Did you realize that when he was born, his mama named him Millard with an M? And somehow when they were writing it on the birth certificate, they swapped it and called him Willard with a W. So he was known as Willard Reynolds Vick. And he never liked the name Willard. That's why he always went by Reynolds. So, David, Jimmy, Michael, praise the Lord, you didn't get named Millard or Willard Reynolds Vick. <laughs> I guess he didn't like it enough to call you Junior, huh? <laughs> and that may be a praise the Lord. <laughs> but what he did do, he left a legacy as being known as Reynolds Vick. And there are four generations now named Reynolds Vick. We have William Reynolds Vick, David Reynolds Vick, Jake Reynolds Vick, and Oliver Reynolds Vick. Wow, that's impressive. And I love to, love to hear that. He was a man of honor. He served in our armed forces in the Air Force for four years. So thank you for defending and honoring us to have a safe and wonderful country. I was also told he owned a car lot. And then the tongue of cheek came. As they said that was before he came to know Jesus. So if you own a car lot, forgive me. I'm just repeating what the family told me. <laughs> he did work for the state of Florida. He was the manager of general services of their print shop and also of their purchasing. And one of his quotes that he always told, in fact, his grandson, Jake, said he instilled it in his mind was, he says, you dress for the job you want, not the job you have. He loved fishing. In fact, I was told that um, he loved fishing so much that him and Jimmy would go to a pond and they would try to fly fish for catfish. And they could do it. Now, you talk about impressive. If you've ever flied fish, to fly fish for a catfish, that's pretty neat. But that was his favorite thing to do. He loved to fly fish. And so I'm wondering now that he's up in heaven, is he up in heaven talking with those fishermen, Peter and Andrew, sharing his fishing stories, or maybe getting his fishing secrets or sharing their secrets with him? Because we read about Peter and Andrew in the Bible that they were great fishermen until the Lord called them to be his disciples. He had boats and he always named his boat Noah's Ark, whether it was Noah's Ark 1, Noah's Ark 2, and I'm thinking that's pretty impressive. Obviously, you know, professionals built the Titanic and it sank. An amateur built the ark and it floated for over a year in the water. So I, obviously I'm thinking he wants to be like, no, I want to make sure this boat never sinks while I'm out in the water. And maybe he gets to share with Noah about why he named his boat the ark. But really what he loved probably the most was singing. Old Mr. Vic loved to praise and worship. There was no doubt about that. He loved to sing. He could also play the keyboard by ear, which I find very impressive. I am very good on the back end of a guitar and of a keyboard, but you put me on the front end where you have to play it, we're in big trouble. But not Mr. Vic. He would sing and sing and sing. And I have a feeling right now he's not talking to Noah. He's probably not talking to Peter and Andrew he is probably right now singing with one of the greatest worship leaders of all time, King David. And he is before the Lord, singing his very heart out, worshiping Jesus and enjoying every minute. Could you imagine right now 
sing in harmony with David, the skilled musician, with the angels of heaven singing to your Lord and Savior? Wow. Doing what he loved the most, worshiping his Lord. Probably one of the things that I knew about him the most, and the family reminded me of this, was that he always says it's all about the cross and it's all about Jesus. And if it's not about the cross and it's not about Jesus, it's nothing. And of course, we knew Mr. Reynolds was a stubborn man. When he made his mind up, it was over. You might as well just enjoy the ride and go with him because you weren't going to stop him. But that's one of the things I loved about him because when he made up his mind, his mind was made up. In fact, what happened was Jake, the grandson, had the privilege of bringing Jimmy, his son, to River of Life. And then Jimmy tried to convince his father, Reynolds, to come. And Mr. Reynolds dug his heels in for a little while. And I guess finally the Holy Spirit got a hold of him and he came. And then when he came, there was no turning back. And like father, like son, see, David decided he wasn't going to come. But dad, after many, many times, finally brought you to it. And you've never turned back either. Mr. Reynolds was a man that when he made a decision, it was a decision he would make and stand by it till the very end. He was like that verse in Psalms 51, 4, that the Bible says, The Lord honors those who fear him and those who swear by their own hurt. See, when Mr. Reynolds made up his mind to follow Jesus, there was no wavering. He was going to follow Jesus to the very end. And he followed Jesus to the very end. Because Jesus doesn't like people who are lukewarm. He wants you either hot or cold. And so family, I want to encourage you. Church family, I want to encourage you and all those who are visiting today. That we need to be like Mr. Reynolds. It's time to quit being lukewarm. It's time to make a decision to follow Jesus. Even if it means to be painful. Even if it means losing some things. Because we need to follow Jesus regardless of what's happening in our world today. And despite what's going on. For when you follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. One day you'll not only see him and worship with him. You'll be worshiping him with Reynolds Vic. Father thank you. For such a dear friend that you gave me and such a wonderful man that you have given to this family. And Lord, I ask right now as our hearts are saddened today for the loss of him. We thank you for the legacy that he left for us. For the things that he taught us. Lord, for even just the life that he lived that we could follow behind. I ask today, Lord, that we would be like Mr. Reynolds. That we truly would be a person that we would swear to our own hurt to follow you and never waver from that. So that one day when we pass this life, you will come and take us home and you will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. And I pray that in Jesus name. Amen. David. shall be
shout of his coming. The sleeping will rise from their slumbering see our king. Uh, we're going to see our loved ones, but we're going to see the king. Listen, at this time, we want to give family and friends an opportunity to say a few words about our dear brother. David, you're going to go first. Then I will take the mic and come down front so that if others would like to speak, I can come to you in case you don't want to come to the stage. Brother, share with us. I got two typed pages, but I probably won't read it because I don't read well. <laughs> and uh, my wife says, be professional and all, and I said, I can't. <clears throat> so uh, uh, Chuck used a lot of my material because it's a common theme that uh, daddy loved Jesus, daddy loved mama, daddy loved his family, and daddy loved singing. So on the daddy loved Jesus part, you might not know, um, he's been a good role model all the way, but then several years back, he had this vision. He had visions and dreams and and the Holy Spirit came to me and said, know him. That's it. And he kept reoccurring, know him. And so dad, you know, he studied and prayed and prayed and says, well, you know, what does it mean? And he talked to us, you know, we'd, me and mama and him would sit at the table for a couple hours talking about scriptures or faith. And he finally, it came to him, it was kind of simple, know him. God wanted him to know him more and more and more every day. And so a lot of y'all sitting out there, you know, when you first come to Christ, you know about, you know about Jesus, you know about God, the Father, you know about the Holy Spirit, but do you know him? Do you really know him? My daddy, he knew him. I mean, really good. And it's so like, when you think about it, it's so like, wow, God inviting you to get close. So my daddy was close. And so uh, Monday, um, a couple of weeks ago, when he went to the hospital, kind of a, a traumatic day in the Vic family. So we're getting up at 6 a.m. Mom calls. We get him to the hospital. 
And uh, I'm sick as a dog, think I may have pneumonia. So we get there, and then if we find out Dad's stable, my mama and my sister send me home. I made the doctor's appointment. I get there, and that night, I mean, I was physically, mentally, spiritually, <laughs> and then, then came Jesus. So I'm laying there in the bed, and I'm singing How Great Thou Art, kind of to myself, and crying on my pillow. And the Holy Spirit comforts me and hugs me. And that ain't left. It's like he said, come, my son, come near. And it's like, whoa. So some of y'all think, how come he's so happy? I know my Jesus. I know the Jesus that my daddy knew. All right. So if, uh, if y'all don't know my Jesus, y'all want to talk to me afterwards? I, it'll be all right. And then law, uh, daddy really loved mama. Now, some of y'all think that they never had any issues. And so we'll, we'll leave that pretty much there. But there was... <laughs> There was one thing that daddy thought he could protect mama from herself. And uh, he was always saying, you're going too much, mama. You're always on the road, mama. And it's like he called her Weeda, but I can't, I can't really do that. I cannot call my mama Weeda. So anyway, so he was telling her, slow down. At our age, you need to take it easy. And mama would say, and very respectful, you may be right, but I love going and I enjoy it. And as long as I can go, I'm going to go. And so that's what mama did. But she made, it's okay. She made him a fresh pound cake. He was fine. So it worked. And then when it gets to family and it's all about Jesus again. So his family, one of the things that he, he would love this right here is like he wanted his family in church. He wanted his children in church, his grandchildren in church, his great grandchildren in church. And what did he want for them? To know Jesus. And so, um, like I said, if you, <laughs> that's the one of the um, things Pastor Chuck already talked about, the 64 and a half years. And, and um, it's so like, so Daddy taught me how to love Jesus. Daddy taught me how to be a good husband. And then Daddy taught me how to love a family as a good father. And some of the times, and I would get on to him because they did what I, it's sacrificial living where they gave and forgave and gave mercy to us children and grandchildren. And from a worldly perspective, you'd say like, okay, enough is enough, you know. And it's like, no, they never cut it off. And now, to daddy and mama's credit, got four grown children, all love the Lord, married to Christian spouses. It's like, it worked, mama. It worked. <laughs> so it's like, I might have disagreed with you a couple times, but it worked. They're here and they love the Lord. So anyway, that's one of the things So uh, on that. And then we get to singing. And that's where the um, mule with the blinder things is on. If daddy said, David, we're going we're gonna to sing. We're going on the road. We're doing this. I said, no, dad, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Uh, he was pretty persistent. And so he would get on it. And sometimes I'd have to ask mama to do interference and say, pull him off of me. I can't take it no more. You know, he, <laughs> and it's like, but one of the things, and this is what I told Priscilla one time. She said, uh, you know, you enjoy singing. That's, I, I have a gift of joy from the Lord, and I express that joy in singing. So I love the joy that's in me. So I'll, I'll, I'll hush now, but uh, like I said, we've been singing since I was a, a wee little thing, and I don't know, 12 or so, I sang in the choir with him. But anyway, I love my daddy, and I'm going to see him again one day. Woo-hoo! Come on, somebody give a testimony. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> the family told me when he was young, he was shy, bashful, and an introvert. He has overcome that, I can tell you. Thank you, my brother. What an amazing testimony uh, to your father. Is there someone else who'd like to say a word? I have a mic. You can stand up. I'll come to you, or you can come forward, either one. All right? My name is Steve Montgomery, and uh, my life, as far as my walk with God and with Jesus, it began, it's all because of Reynolds and Weta. They said to me, we just want you to do the adult Sunday school class for one Sunday, and we've got everything laid out for you in the book, and it's marked, and you just got to kind of read to them and follow <clears throat> along. I don't know how many years ago that was, but I've been doing it ever since. And my walk with God, it's like, I'll say that Reynolds and Weta opened the door for me to go through 
and I keep going. And I appreciate that. Love you to death. And look forward to seeing Reynolds at some time. Amen. 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 Someone else. going to wait to see if anybody else wants to speak but um I before I get to what I want to say everybody being here is uh it's touching I'm I try not to cry because I'm manly um and my dad cries enough for the rest of us sorry but uh it it uh it's pushing the limits for me I, I greatly appreciate it we all do um so Papa is uh everything that could be said is almost said however there's one thing, and I've told a couple of y'all, and it, it doesn't make sense to anybody that doesn't know Jesus, right? Um, I've had all of y'all, um, people at work, um, they gave me a flower or a plant from office, which it needed something in there anyways, uh, a card, and everybody's been awesome. And, you know, part of my mind's like, you need to be sad, but I'm not. Um, yeah, I was sad, you know, when I heard my grandma cry. Um, but she didn't cry as much as somebody who didn't know Jesus would cry when they lost someone of that many years. Um, so that was comforting. And the next morning she woke up, said her heart was at peace. I mean, what else do you want to hear? So um, basically what I'm saying is, unfortunately, you know, there's a lot of people who's lost loved ones that I was close to. And I've always told them and I meant it and I did it. I pray that the peace that surpasses all understanding be with you and yours. Sounded nice. It is nice. I believed it. I've never felt it like this before. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. It does pass all under. I mean, that's it. Uh, I've got the peace. I've got a Hawaiian shirt on because I'm here to celebrate. And um, hey, I love Jesus. And it's all because of the foundational block that my grandma and my grandpa set for us and it's passed down. And uh, I'm going to keep it up. Thank you all for being here. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow, what a beautiful testimony. Uh, what a testimony this whole family is. Someone else. Miss Rita? Like Jake said, it's overwhelming to see such love expressed in each one of you. Uh, we had a great life. The Lord was good to us. I was telling somebody... Uh, that Reynolds, he, he lost his freedom when the first time he kissed me. <laughs> that was in July of 1956. <laughs> and neither of us ever looked back. We knew that that was our destiny, to be together. And it's been wonderful. The only thing negative he ever said about me, and he was right, that I was stubborn. Can you imagine me being stubborn? Oh, well. But anyway, he was, he was an awesome person. And we all had our, you know, your bumps in the road as you travel along. But he somehow or another made them smooth. We never had a lot of worldly things, but we were rich. Rich in the things that God provided for us in love of family, love of friends. And one of the last things that he said on Monday of the 10th, it was the last time we really could communicate somewhat. And uh, we was fishing. And he told them, says, well, I don't have my fishing license because she stayed so busy all the time that I, I couldn't get my license. <laughs> but then he says, you know, we got such good friends. Mm. Friends, he was, you guys, was on his mind just before he went to meet the Lord. And for that, I will always be grateful to. And I just appreciate each one of you being here today. Love you. And the support that I feel through you is overwhelming. But yes, I'm at peace. I'm sad and I'm going to have my moments and I'm going to cry. But you know, some of the tears are selfishness because I'm, I'll be here without him. It won't be because he's with Jesus. It'll be because of my selfishness. 
And, and that's sort of sad, isn't it? But I know that he's going to be with me the same way as, as, as Jesus is with me every day. I can feel his love. And I thank you again for being here and honoring him in such a way and blessing this family by your presence and your love. Thank you for being here. You know, after hearing this family, their testimonies, knowing Brother Reynolds, uh, my iPad is there. That's fine. I don't need it. Uh, two words come to my mind. Success story. This is a success story. I have to tell you, through the years as a pastor, I have met all kinds of people. I've met people who were old and bitter and angry and full of regret. And boy, that's rough when you run into somebody like that. But thank God, I have also met those who were just the opposite, like Brother Reynolds. As Pastor Coburn said, a smile on their face, a positive voice in the room. Someone who always had a word of encouragement. I knew him here. This is where I knew him. Even though I visited in the home and prayed over him in the past. But I knew him here. And when he would hug my neck and lean in and whisper a word of encouragement in my ear. Or walk down the aisle, usually after a service, not during the service. And put his hands on my shoulders and lean in. And it seemed like he was always on time. The perfect timing, the word of encouragement I needed to hear. L listen, uh, I don't know what bitter is. Uh, I don't know how you'd define it, but I can tell you Reynolds Vic was the opposite of bitter. He lived his life. He was thankful. He was blessed. He was full of hope. He was full of faith. He was full of life. Now, you know as well as I do that all of us have mistakes, and he did too, but some people just shine a little brighter than others, and he was one of those individuals. One of the things I loved about him is something that I preached on, I have preached on through the years. I, I used to preach a sermon that was entitled, uh, Live Until You Die. Don't, don't die while you're still living. And you see, some people, uh, as they grow old, they live all the way to the end. Uh, they, they live their lives. I mean, they're not, they're not dying. They're living. And Brother Reynolds was one of those individuals that just lived. He lived it all the way to the end with joy, with victory, with hope, with faith. It, it was, it was uh, profound to, to watch him. And why wouldn't he do that? He was a Christian. He loved the Lord. Did you know that, that Jesus said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live? And listen, and he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Did you hear that? Jesus said, not my words, his words. He that believeth in me shall never die. Did you know Christians don't die? They don't. Christians don't die. Oh, the body we live in dies. But we don't die. Oh, I, t I tell you, I believe that because Jesus said it, but I also believe it, Miss Weeder, because I've had the privilege through the years of being with a lot of folks who have stepped out into eternity. I've seen the glow and the glory in their eyes when they gaze into another world. And they know it's real when their faith becomes sight. I have been in the room with people and I knew they were seeing something and I was jealous. I wanted to see what they were seeing. Uh, one of my favorite stories I tell is I was standing by the bedside of a man and he told me, he said, um, Pastor Henry, he said, uh, I'm going home today. He said, my sister came to visit with me and told me I was going home with her today. I said, that is awesome. I said, I didn't even know you had a sister. He said, well, she died 20 years ago. 
But she just visited me and told me I was going home to be with her in heaven. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't, he, he was talking like we're talking now. How could that be in less than an hour? He closed his eyes, went home to be with the Lord. What an amazing story. I, I believe it. Hey, I, I, I've got a news flash for you today. Reynolds Vic did not die. He did not die. He changed his address. He went to a better place. He, he gave up an earthly body for a heavenly home. Reynolds Vic did not die. He's more alive right now than any of us. And the beautiful thing about it is this. He lived his life like he was going to live. And not like he was going to die. And, and hearing these stories, listen, he made a choice. He made a choice, and that choice has touched several generations and made a difference. Did you know that there's a place in the Bible, it just can't get more simple than this. There's a place in the Bible where God says, this is God now, this is the voice of God speaking it in the Bible. He said, I set before you life and death. Now you have to choose. And the beautiful thing about it is, is, is God says, I set before you life and death, therefore choose life. He puts before us the option. You can either choose life and live or you can choose death. But God says, choose life. And that's what he did. He, he made the choice for life. And he lived it. And what a difference it has made in this family. Just hearing your testimonies just, just blows me away. I have to tell you. Well, so much has been said, and I'll keep my remarks short, but I do want to tell you this. When I thought about it, and I try to envision this as a pastor, when I thought about Brother Reynolds Vick walking into heaven, I thought about an old poem that I heard many years ago. And the reason this poem came to my mind, no doubt, was because of his love for music and his love for singing. It goes like this. Holy, holy, holy is what the angels sing. And I expect to help them make the courts of heaven ring. But when I sing salvation story, they must fold their wings. For angels never knew the joy that our salvation brings. Uh, it's not hard for me to believe. We've already talked about it. It's not hard for me to believe he's singing right now. Uh, he, he, he may be doing to others in heaven what he did to you, David. You're going to sing. We're, we're singing. We're, we're, we're celebrating. And, uh, and I tell you, uh, what great members we have. In fact, with a broken voice, on up in age, voice not what it was at one time, but this will touch your heart. Would you listen, please?
Wow. Now that hasn't been very long ago. How, how long ago was that, David? Right before COVID. Right before? He was practicing, ready to sing. February 2020. What a beautiful voice. I believe, I'm not sure, but I believe I'll be able to sing like the Vicks <laughs> when I get to heaven. I, I don't have any hope between now and then, but when I, when I get to heaven, what, what a success story. What a beautiful, beautiful life well lived. What a success story. But you know, the greatest success of all is the fact that there was a day when Reynolds Vic made Jesus Christ the Lord of his life. And he didn't just almost get saved. He got saved all the way. And I got to tell you, when you get saved all the way, it has a rippling effect. Uh, Brother Ralph Oliver, back in the back, says, when you get saved and you get saved good, it makes a huge, huge difference. I want to close with a story. Many years ago, when my wife and I were young and in school, we were out in Mississippi, and I visited in the home of a guy by the name of Mr. Myers. And Mr. Myers told me that he, at one time, was a member of Bellevue Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, where the great Dr. R.G. Lee pastored. And for me to just be talking to somebody who knew uh, the great R.G. Lee uh, was, uh, I, I, I was just spellbound. And he told me story after story uh, about what the preacher said and the sermons he preached, even about the sermon Payday Someday that he preached. But he told me one story I never forgot. He said one morning, one Sunday morning, Bellevue Baptist Church, the ushers were standing at the door and a young man ran up those steps. And the usher reached out his hand and took him by the hand. And he said, welcome, son. You're at the right place. He'd never seen him before, but he said, you're at the right place. Good things are going to happen for you today. And he said, Dr. Lee told this whole story uh, from the pulpit. And he said, and then a car pulled up in front of the church and the window came down and another young man said, don't do it. Come on, we're going to have fun today. Come on, go with me. Uh, we've got some plans. The usher said, son, don't do it. Don't do it. There's a reason you're here. Don't do it. You come on to church. God's going to speak to you today. And there he was. And I'm sure you know this already. When God calls, the world calls also. And the world was calling him. And the usher said the young man finally made his decision, turned and ran down the steps, jumped in the car, and they sped away. But only a few blocks at high speed, there was an accident. And no one survived. And they said uh, the next Sunday morning, Dr. Lee told that story. But it was so heavy on his heart that he wrote a poem and quoted it to the congregation. And the poem goes like this. He stood at the door. The door stood wide. Just by the portals, but not inside. Almost ready to enter in. Almost ready to give up sin. Almost ready to count the cost. Almost saved, but eternally lost. That's the saddest poem I've ever heard in my life. And I think there are people who almost get saved. The family asked me if I would make an appeal to you, to everybody here, not almost, but all the way. Not almost, but all together. Not almost saved, but saved like Reynolds Vic. Saved like those who sell out to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to pull a little prayer up on the screen. 
And I'm going to read that prayer, and I hope you will read it with me if you just whisper it under your breath. But the main thing is that you mean it with all of your heart. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. This can be the day that changes your life forever. This can be your defining moment. This can be the moment where you choose. You make the right choice. Life and death before you. You choose life. I'll read it. I hope you'll read it with me. I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead. Jesus, please come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I willingly give you my life now and forever. Heal me. Change me. Strengthen me in body, soul, and spirit. Cover me with your precious blood and lead me from this day forward. If you prayed that prayer and trusted Jesus, if you were not sure when you came into this place, but you prayed that prayer and trusted Jesus, would you, would you walk up to me and just share it with me before you leave the building today, before you leave the property? I want to pray right now. Father, thank you for a service that truly, truly honored our brother. But it also lifts up what you can do when somebody surrenders completely and totally to you. Father, I just ask now that you would continue as you have done so beautifully. Lord, that you'll continue to comfort this family and meet every need they have. Strengthen them, draw them closer together. May their testimony grow brighter and brighter through the years. I pray, Father, this will be a family where the circle is unbroken. Where every member is saved. Not playing church, but saved. Completely, not almost, but all together saved. I pray, Father, that no one will leave here today without knowing you as Lord and Savior. That at this memorial service, it becomes... Uh, uh, the first step, square one, where the journey begins. Father, would you bless? Bless this family. Bless us. Draw us closer to you. And Father, once again, we want to thank you for the precious memories we have of our dear brother Reynolds Vic. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes the service today. I do want to tell you that we have food in the Children's Worship Center. The family will be going over for a meal, and you are invited to join us. I hope you will stay and be a part uh, of the meal, and it will give you an opportunity to fellowship with the family. God bless you. We're dismissed.
turn that up anymore. Yeah. Just need to turn it more up. They're running right now up there, and I've got a few that dumps it on you. What joy shall fill my heart? What joy shall I don't know how you did it, but I was impressed that he walked out of this congregation and got to read back from him. I said, I'm very, very impressed. Henry came out. I barely could hear it. I heard it the first time, but you got it quickly, and I didn't hear it after that. I think sometimes if he's got another microphone on, I can... This is too right, you can correct, right. 